My name is Oscar Singer, and I'm born May 10th, 1925, in Radomir Wielki in Poland. My family, we were living in a house with four brothers and one sister. My dad was a butcher shop. I to tell the language, I was the middle boy, was an older brother, and there was a next brother. I was the number three brother, and the little, my little brother. There was four brothers and thing, and one little girl. I told my dad, the Germans are coming right here. And he was praying, you know, for good deeds. And he said, they're gonna come in, they're gonna kill you. They see you, all you think so much you're praying. Then he says, don't worry, everything will be all right. And uh, God will help more. So the Germans came in with motorcycles. We wanna quit, we didn't fight anything. But they just walked in like neighbors. And finally, my dad put away the stuff that he couldn't have any choice. They walked in at the door. If they see him praying, they were going to kill him. The oldest brother, he was in the Polish army at the front line in Warsaw. He was fighting there. He was uh, driving up big tanks there. Five boys went to the service. Four came back. Only my brother died. We started to work for the Germans. They came in at six o'clock and aroused in the German means go you come out. Every morning they pick us up there. And we went to forest, you know, and we had to cut the trees. We had to make some streets. You don't have any choice, you have to go to work or you get killed, that's all. The Jews were living in a corner where the Jews lived in the town. They call it a ghetto. The Polish people were separate. You can keep on working all the time. They didn't give you anything to think. For lunch, you could have a little water with things that just to get by. They didn't put in any noodles and then things they would soup. And the weather was cold, so this was September starting to get in the snow and the little brother get sick, so he had to stay home. And it wasn't so bad till he got the war so later after a while. Later, they got to put this into work in an airplane factory. They put that in that KL, that means Konzentrationslager. So they spell it with a K here in Germany, Konzentrations. And this is Lager, means camp, concentration camps. After six weeks, starting to get troubles, then they, they locked us up and we couldn't go out anymore. And we keep us there, we were working there for a year, a year and a half. Every day we went to work, there was the SS, yeah, they call it the uniformed Germans with guns, whatever they go. And they'll take you to work because the people would run away if they would let you there. My oldest brother, Alte, he was working with me together. They took him. He says he's going to work in a farm, you know, they're grinding corn for bread. One time they took him out, he was still half asleep, and he was grinding up the corn. Then his feet falling down in the things there. 
There was no help and they took him out. His feet were gone already. And they, didn't, they took him someplace to a clinic and they killed him or poisoned and everything. And I didn't know. In Germany, they say, you must come here via hunt. You have to die like a dog. That's what they keep telling to us. Working or dying, working or dying. And I kept up like that, otherwise I wouldn't be here either. And I was left with my little brother in Mielitz, in the Fluchtowick, we're still working. Not so many people left, but my little brother was okay. In 1943, uh, they transport us it was very bad. People were dying, half of them, in the cart. Like cows, you, you could transport cows and all locked up, you know, give you nothing to eat. So you have to die, like they say. They transport us from that Flugzeug work to Vialichka. My brother, we worked over there maybe six weeks. We couldn't do any more. I said, I'm glad. I hope they transferred us. And from Vialich got to Flash of Krakow. I did whatever we could do with me and my brother survived. They took us to Auschwitz. And then when we came into Auschwitz, some people they picked for you to work and some people they picked for you to die. They see people, young people or old people, they couldn't walk anymore. And they saw you're gonna take a shower and they turned the chemical stuff there and they all died and things there. So they left us in the site because you're still able to work. While they were still alive, I took out the gold teeth and everything, all the gold. I had to have the things like a dentist took out. I wasn't a dentist. I took out the teeth with the equipment that they gave me. People were hollering and screaming. People would have diamonds, you know, all the rich people, they picked them up from the other countries. So Fifteen people every day got eliminated. We couldn't work. In the middle of 44, I was still able to work. They transferred us to south of Germany, and I was working in a tank factory. Later, when it gets bad, the, the Russians came in, in there. We had to go to Theresienstadt. And there, when we walked in there, mostly was people left over from the war. We had to walk from 
Schachbrits by Dresden, Russian airplanes, United States airplanes, they saw us walking. We were walking like that for six weeks. Now my brother gave up, he couldn't walk anymore. And then the Germans saying, go, go, you have to go, just leave people who can walk. How they kill him, I don't know. To leave him there on the, on the side from the streets. Father used to say, don't worry, God will help. All you come, whenever you can do it, make a prayer. But don't pray when they see it, otherwise you're going to get killed. They didn't believe in God, they didn't believe in anything else. All I tell you what they told us. We're going to go to work, we're going to be good workers. They let you live, so, but they didn't let you have, they were lying to you. I was working after the war, I was washing dishes in a German restaurant in Munich, Germany. After I started washing dishes, they sent me to be a cook. They would send me to Modena, Italy, so I can make some pizzas there. I don't know if she likes my pizzas now, but I don't make any more pizzas, I'm going to die. Spaghetti with meatballs he used to sell in Denver. We were, this was in the 50s, and, this, and I got out after. The war now to make people I get it with just 99 cents with the salad and beer or something, everything else is. But this is all the things that we always say what you live today, forget about yesterday. They say that high on higher soil I'm in the Bible that says that talk about tomorrow, don't talk about it, you what it was. What good is it to be angry? And if you get angry, you're gonna lose your lungs, you're gonna lose your kidneys. Thank God I'm all right. I was at the doctor last week. He says I'm all right. That's what he says. He says he's all right. Teaching the Holocaust better, the students themselves got to feel sorry for them from the Holocaust. When they see your pictures like that, I have my pictures. Lots of people denying the Holocaust too. How can they deny? I am willing to do the best you can in person what I can do. <laughs>